This week on Sport Fishing, we're fishing back aboard the Chief, and today we're doing something different. We're right along the coast here, fishing with Captain Chris, and what we're doing is starting off looking for yellowtail, yep. and if we do really good here, maybe go offshore. Yeah, we might go offshore and yep. go look for some tuna. So stay tuned yep. for this week's exciting episode of Sport Fishing. I'm Dan Hernandez and I live to fish. That's a nice vermilion right there. Yeah! This is what fishing's like. I have been fishing along the Pacific Coast my entire life. Let me bring you in in the action and share with you some great fishing tips along the way. Jim from downtown San Diego fishing with us on the Mighty Chief. His first yellowtail of the, on day. Of the day. Thanks, Dan. On a coffee grinder, 20 pound test. Nice work. True sportsman. Good job, good job. Do it again. Nice and easy, nice and smooth. Ready? Drop and wind. All right. This is the proper technique. Pull up slowly, wind down fast. But remember to start turning your reel before you drop the rod. Grind down. Okay, stop. Wind down. All right, coming through, guys. Coming through, coming through, come with me. Another nice yellowtail. This is our first yeah. yellowtail fishing here on the Chief. We're fishing in inshore today because the weather's up a little bit on the outside and the tuna bite's been very slow, but this is not a bad trade off. There Beautiful great right. fish. Perfectly Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Good job. All right. Yeah. Wasn't the best gap shot, but we got him. Thanks, bro. Yes, sir. Nice yellowtail. No wrong here. Justin, where are you from, Justin? Riverside, California. Riverside, California, fishing local waters on the mighty chief. What'd you catch it on, live sardine? Live sardine. What pound test line? 40. 40, that's the key right there. 40, 40 pound. Beautiful fish, good job. There you go, keep grinding, keep grinding. Keep grinding. Stay right here, stay right here, stay right here. There you go. Pull up, pull up. Alright, free spool, there you go. Swing around this way, turn this way. Nice work, buddy. Alright, there we go. That's hey, what happens when you, you get the first You got a workout. Got a nice yellow here, so hopefully we got more of that to come here. We're going to get back underway and see what uh, Mother Nature has to offer. Good job, dude. You did an excellent job on that fish. Yellowtail can be found in a wide range far north as British Columbia and down south into Chile. We usually find good numbers of them from Point Conception down into the Baja waters. They can grow up to 100 pounds and then they feed on a variety of bait fish including sardines, mackerel, and even like squids and shrimps too. They're one of the most popular game fish in all of California.
run out. Good my dog. Another species to our list. We got a yellow oh, one. Oh, it's a frisky one. Flat <laughs> Good job, man. Cool. Thank you, yep. Chris. We're still milling around offshore here and uh, looking for the, all the species. But uh, this is a nice yellowfin tuna and a backlash reel. Don't do this at home. <laughs> all right, good job, man. Cool. Thank you. Yep. All right. Nice and easy. Don't pull his head out of the water. Try to pull his head out of the water. Wow, sorry. Right. Bow tied rod up, too. <laughs> there you go. Let me get him off the hook for you. This is Mike. He's one of our regulars. Came out with us today aboard the Chief. Got this nice yellowfin tuna. It's the first yellowfin so far today. We got a bunch of yellowtail on the boat. So we're making a change. We were inside earlier fishing right on the beach, on the kelp, looking for yellowtail. And then we left there. We hit a kelp patty for a couple yellows. And then this is our second kelp. It had some yellows mixed in and this yellowfin tuna. So that's the game plan now. We're going to stay offshore, go about 20, 30 miles offshore, and see if we can find us some more yellowfin, maybe a bluefin tuna. Let's take a little break from the action and go to the galley and show you how to cook up one of the delicious fish we're catching today. Nice job, man. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. This week in the galley, we're in San Diego, California. And we're in the Mission Hills area, right next to Hillcrest, right on the border there. Sand next to me is Chef Will. We're here at the patio. Hey, Chef, thanks for having hey, us out today. Thanks, Sam. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. So what do you have in store for us? Uh, today we're going to be doing a little ahi tacos that we've been having on the menu since the opening of the restaurant. So we have a little bit of bluefin tuna here that we're going to you know, put into little taco shells. You know, Normally in the restaurant, we have these things that are going to be pre-fried and make it a little bit easier for us during the course of service. So you know, we pre-dice all our uh, bluefin tuna and you know, put it in your bowl right away. And you, know, you can use yellowfin, you can use bluefin, whatever, whatever you really like. And this, this uh, marinade right here is uh, soy ginger, so a little bit of soy sauce, ginger, sambal, a little sesame oil, nothing crazy. You can get whatever, whatever you feel necessary for flavor-wise. And then we're gonna mix it in with a little cilantro scallion, a little sesame seeds there. And you know, you're gonna wanna let this sit a little bit because you are, you are marinating it, so you wanna kinda let that marinade get into the fish and you know, get all the juices going and get all the flavors going. So this is Napa cabbage we chefinated really, really fine so that you know, doesn't, you don't want it to be too thick because if it gets too thick it doesn't really, doesn't give it the texture that you want it to have. So we're going to line our shells here with a little Napa. And it also helps the fact that all those juices don't go into the, into the shell and make the shells all soggy. So instead of the, instead of the shells getting all soggy, we'll let the cabbage get soggy there. So now we let our fish marinate there a little bit take our shells, kind of want to do it over the bowl, that way anything that you do drop gets thrown back into the bowl there. And you know, as the Japanese do, we'll put a little wasabi on there and a little pickled ginger to finish it all off. And you know, at the restaurant we do three of these, we do four of these, six of these, ten of these, however you might want to the table and we get it all out there for you guys. Well, Chef Well, this looks delicious. Awesome. I got to try one. Nah, go for it, go for it. Textures, sweet, salty, spicy. It's a little great. Bit. Yeah, right, fresh. Can't it's taste got it all too, kinds right? of different flavors. Yeah, yeah. And I've never had a taco shell like this. So. Uh, it's the wonton. You fry them up really crispy like that. It changes it's... the textures all completely. Well, thanks, Chef Will. Thanks a lot. This is a great dish. And is there any one tip you can give somebody at home making this? Uh, the thing is, get the tuna as fresh as you can get it. There's no sense of you know going out and getting something that's one, two days, three days old. You want to get it as fresh as you possibly can. That way, the flavors are clean and the tuna talks about the tuna, that's about it right yeah, there. Very simple just to do. You can do this a day after a fishing trip. Yep. Don't put the fish in the freezer, no, throw it no, in the no. refrigerator, and make it the next day. Absolutely, absolutely. That's really good. Well, yeah. thanks again. Thanks so, a lot. Thanks a lot, Dan. Remember, it's the patio. It's the Mission Hills area of San Diego. You guys are on Facebook and all uh, that? Facebook, Instagram. I'm the one that really takes care of the pictures for all the pictures, so you'll see all the food that we put out that day. Um, yeah, we're all over social media. Thanks, man. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot. All right, well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sports Fishing.
Tony, promotion side. Fishing on the Chief. Gotta go back. Quality Dorado. What a mess. I don't know. I don't know what you call this other than a, a tangle rado. Tangle rado. It's a new species, tangle rado. Thanks, Jeff, for the good headshot. Perfectly hooked in the corner of the mouth. All the elephant. Well, welcome back. We're still here aboard the Chief. We're fishing this Cal Patty. We got a couple Dorado off it. Char's on right now. He's got a little Dorado. It's been jumping out there. He's going to work it in here toward the boat so I can get out of his way and let him land it. Here, let me get around you there. There you go. Dorado. Now, my little baby Dorado. Uh, my name's Char from Laguna Hills. Fishing on board. What can I say? Fishing on the Chief. The Chief. Come on, right? Keep coming left. Keep coming left. There we go. That's a nice yellow fin tuna. There we go. Good work. Ah! Oh, I'm on the cheek. All right. Let's go tag him up. Deep color on my tuna. Deep color. Fish is coming up to the surface. Fish come up to the surface like that because it's easier for them to swim that direction. Yep. They're getting tired. Let them get under the boats. Here we go. We're, we're out of the danger zone. One more crank. Here we go. Oh, oh, look at that one, baby! This is why we go tuna fishing. <laughs> nice, big, beautiful fish. Oh, behind you! Another fresh one. We got four going. We got four or five fish going right here. Here's another one just got yeah. bit. It's pretty great yeah. fishing right here aboard the And chief. they're getting bigger. <laughs> this week in the Tackle Box, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing this week, fishing offshore, hitting these cow patties, looking for schools of fish. You never know if it's going to be yellowtail, dorado, tuna, and you're offshore and you're fishing with live bait. You know, most people think it's about the line class, the rod, it's the hook they're using when they're fishing with live bait. And to tell you the truth, 80% of it happens all right at the bait tank. It's all about waiting to find a good, lively bait. You want one of those sardines or even an anchovy that's doing circles and figure eights inside that bait well, and it's hard to catch. You have to use both your hands to catch it. Remember, you don't want to grab it and squeeze it. You just want to slide your hand underneath, get that good, lively bait, then you pin on the hook. And the hooks you use, it depends if you want to set the hook on the fish or if you're not sure when to set the hook, then use a circle hook. There's lots of different circle hooks and stuff on the market. What I recommend is for offshore fishing, nothing lighter than a 3X hook. And this is what a circle hook like that looks like. And this has a ring on it too. And what's nice about the ring is that your bait will be able to swim freely any direction. And that ring really comes in handy. If you can learn how to tie a perfection loop knot, you don't need to buy a hook with a ring on it, but if you don't know how to tie that knot, getting a hook with a ring will help you out a lot. If you're gonna go with the J-style hook, again, nothing lighter than a 3X hook for those big tuna, big Dorado, you wanna be prepared. Now, when you go fishing, you're never sure what size bait you're gonna have. Could be small anchovies, could be nice sardines, could be mackerel, and mackerel come in all different sizes. Because of that, I really recommend you take a whole tray with you with different hooks. And like I like to take is different sizes for all the way down to anchovies, all the way up to mackerel. I even like to take some bigger hooks in case we see a billfish out there. Last season we saw a lot of marlin out there. So it's nice to have a nice big hook in case we see a marlin, we can drop a live mackerel on it and try to hook them. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. Well, this is what you're not supposed to do. That's a no-no. This is called thumb in the line, people, and I try to recommend you don't do it. Some guys that are really good can do it, and they know when to let go, but if you're not an absolute pro, no, no, no. What'll happen is the fish will do a run, and it'll break your hook. Um, that's what your drag's designed for. 
And I, I don't recommend you do it. He's doing it, but you'll notice he lets go when he's winding, so he can do it. But it's it's risky, risky proposition. I think you've done this before. A couple of times. A couple of times. See what I mean? Pro. I've been having a lot of fun out here on the Chief. It's my third Damn. one today. Damn Damn and the crew. Yep. There we go, another little Dorado. Another Dorado, second one of the day. Uh, yeah. Okay, guys, this one's done. Yeah, buddy. Three, thirty-four, one on the troll. But. Deep color here any minute. Yeah. These are fighters. This is a good fighter. You can tell. Look at the bend in the rod. I mean, it's a definite solid bend. And every now and then he'll do a short run. It's probably a 30 pound yaw, but there's deep color. This is the tricky deep part. Deep color. Yep. This is the tricky part. Try to work them free in the corner here. All right. Keep, you want to keep your rod down. If they go under the boat, lower your rod tip so you avoid the propellers. And so you stand on the corner here. Oh yeah, it's a yellow fin. Yep. He's close, look at that. There's the color. There we go. Here he comes, right here. All right. Nice yellow fin too. Yeah. Boy, we've done a little bit of everything today. <laughs> Fishing yellowtail on the beach. Catching barracuda, Toronto, calico bass. Yellowfin tuna. Man, you can't have a variety of fishing like we have today. Yeah, look Just at this awesome. Thing. Beautiful, Beautiful yellowfin fish. tuna. Yeah. It's one of the reasons we love fishing with Chris on the Chief. He's always going to find us some fish. And yep. today we found a little bit of everything. The pot pouring. We did inshore and offshore sure. today. And we still got plenty of time left. Yeah, we, we're going to be fishing till dark. But yep. I'm going to take a little break from the action right, right now. And when we return, I'll be giving you this week's tip of the week. Nice fish, man. All right. This is Amy, she's out fishing with us. She's been on a few trips in the past, like twilight trips and three quarter day trips. Hasn't been on an overnight trip with us before, her first time. And earlier today, she caught a nice yellow. Right now, she's got a fish going. Don't know if it's a Dorado or if it's a tuna. And she's fishing a fly line sardine, 20 pound test line, and a two op muscat hook. I think it's a 94151 live bait hook, just a J hook. Here you go, don't point the rod all the way at the fish, keep the rod bit. I think you got a tuna, I don't think this is a Dorado. <laughs> Take your time, wind down, okay stop. There, it's a tuna, it's a tuna. Ah, well, you got it. 
Got him on the boat. Hit him in the head the first time, but... All right. Woo. The elephant's here now. Wow. How'd you like that? Nice work. That was Damn incredible. It. Good job. Good quality yellow fan. Beautiful Not fish. Bad. For this week's tip of the week, guys, I just want to tell you what happened right now. Amy was on this long drift. We we're picking away at those small Dorado. All the Dorado were tiny. So she dropped down a 20 pound test line. It's a smaller size reel, 25 pound test line. No um, Spectre on the reel. No fluorocarbon on the end, just straight 20 pound mono, smaller hook, and it was a two op Mustad 94151 hook, fly bait hook, J style hook, and a sardine. It had that sardine all the way out there, almost ran out of line, and the fish came by and ate it. And that's this week's tip. When you get a, a touchy bite like that, downsize your line, downsize your hook, and just soak that bait. That bait was way out there, I don't know, a couple hundred feet or more than that, probably and uh, fish came up and ate it. Nice calf, quality fish, nice, nice, nice job. All right, well on behalf of everybody here with the sport fishing team, I'm Dan Hernandez. Just want to thank the whole crew of the Chief, Captain Chris and all the guys, everybody in the galley. We had a great time fishing with them. We fish with them all the time. If you want to join us and catch a fish like this or be on the TV show, just go to our website at sport-fishing.com and look at all our trips there. We have trips like this on the Chief where you can catch tuna. We have trips in the Bay Area, catch salmon, and all kinds of local trips in Southern California. Well, I'm Dan Hernandez, and on behalf of everybody here at Sport Fishing, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Sport Fishing, and I hope you join us again next week as we go looking for more of the best in sport fishing. Nice job.